fiction. Science fiction. Horror. Fantasy. Crime. LGBT. Thriller. You have now entered the House of Mystery. With your hosts, Eric Shapiro, David North Martino, John Copenhaver, and Al Warren. Heard on FM Los Angeles. 102.3 FM Riverside. And 105.0 AM Palm Springs. Welcome back into the House of Mystery. And, of course, I'm Al Warren. Mr. Eric Covid shapiro is the co-host today. <laughs> How are you, Al? I hope I don't sound too groggy. No, 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 no. It kind of makes you sound a little bit more more butch. Yeah, that's true. I've always been going for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you kind of have that, <laughs> you know, that rough guy look today. So, Yeah, we'll, we'll just help. go with it. Yeah, we'll go with it. You'll be the butch one today. <laughs> um, okay. Now, today we've got uh, a writer. Um, all the way from New Zealand. So, uh, Miss Lee Murray, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Al. And hi, Eric. Lovely to, lovely to not see you today on radio. <laughs> um, I hope, I hope you're, you're feeling a little better anyway. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty much, uh, on the mending end of it. It's, yeah, it's, it's kicking around a little bit, but I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, so let's talk about Lee. Now, Lee, um, uh, first time on the show. So tell, tell the listeners a little bit about who you are and, and what kind of things you're writing. Um, well, thanks, Al. I, I'm, um, as I said, a New Zealand writer. Um, I've been writing maybe 15 years. Uh, I'm, um, I think possibly our most awarded horror writer. So, uh, um, and I kind of write a bit of horror and dark fantasy and some crime noir. Um, I think I've written 12 or 15 books and um, I've edited, you know, curated anthologies, I think about 20 of those. Um, and I'm also sort of making a bit of a splash in poetry just lately. So, yeah, um, love, love. It's the best job in the world. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> love it. Very tough in New Zealand to, to um, make a living as a writer. We're a very small market and, and the, you know, the focus is more here on, on nonfiction and literary fiction so for a genre writer it's a bit of a it's a bit of a tough ask oh wow so uh what what got you into that kind of uh, uh writing like it seems a little bit darker especially with the horror and stuff would is it is it something uh yeah. Something personal? Something personal. Well, yeah, I think it is, isn't it? <laughs> Writing is always very personal and also, also quite subversive. I think, I think for me, um, horror and sort of mystery and those kinds of, of genres are, are, to me, um, problem solving and dealing with the, the real world. You know, we use, mm-hmm. we use the supernatural sometimes, but we're generally looking at things that, 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 um, that make us frightened, that, that we're concerned about, the things that really, you know, um, impact on our everyday lives. And so for me, I'm looking at things like otherness and um, the diaspora, um, the, the Asian sort of diaspora here in New Zealand. I've, I've looked at sort of dark fantasy ideas, speculative ideas. I'm, I'm from the future, you know, New Zealand is a day ahead. So I, obviously I have to look into the future. <laughs> So um, I, I started out my writing career, to be quite honest, writing um, a chiclet, you know, a sort of women's contemporary fiction. And why I absolutely have no qualms about that, you know, I'm very proud of the book that I wrote. Um, and it was a sort of learner book, you know, the, the book that you learn, all those skills, the things you need to, to sort of move yourself forward as a writer. It was kind of my debut. I, um, I kind of realized at the end of that that I didn't really want to write about sort of wardrobe mis- malfunctions and sort of cupcakes and, and, and those kind of things. I wanted to really write about the things that resonated for me that impacted my life personally and the things that made me frightened and concerned me, the worries I had. I mean, I wanted to look at those in, in a deeper way because I think if you can put them down on the page in fiction, you, it creates a bit of distance and you can sort of problem solve on the page and you can feel like you can give yourself hope that if your characters can make their way through it, then perhaps 
we as humanity can also do that. So to me, horror seems like, you know, that kind of so horror and speculative seems the natural progression for grown up writers. Uh, <laughs> she says. <laughs> <laughs> so is there generally, uh, I know this is, uh, I, I don't mean to put my thumb on the scale with this question, but it sounds like you generally seek some semblance of a happy ending or, you know, like like getting through the struggle. Is that accurate? No, no. But even no, if you no. die, okay. you understand why. You know, there is a decision okay. to make. And, no, I don't think it has to necessarily be a happy ending. I, I, I don't think that at all. But I do think it's the process of, of dealing with it. I mean, you know, I think if you think of Cormac McCarthy's um, The Road, you know, you're looking at those aspects of humanity in the darkest possible way. And that doesn't have a happy ending. And yet it's extremely mm. helpful when we're looking at, you know, the end of the world and what what people, you know, where people will cling to, to those little, little aspects of hope. And I think that, um, so I think that there's, it doesn't, no, I don't necessarily think it has to be a happy ending. I think if we're writing a mystery, though, I mean, it's nice to have, we want to know, you have a contract with the writer, uh, with the reader, beg your pardon, and you, so you definitely have to find out who did, who done it, right? We need, we need to know who done it, or we need some kind of resolution, and be that an, a, rea a real resolution or some kind kind of supernatural uh, response or answer to it um we still need that for the satisfaction of the of the reader so um you know so i think we do have to consider the contract we write with with you know we 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 engage in with the reader so if it's set up as a sort of mm. crime noir then obviously our sleuths need to come up with some kind of answer so that the reader gets a satisfying read <laughs> In addition to the, the personal connection you have to these genres with the meaning of darkness and so forth, are you also, first and foremost, a fan of dark fiction? Oh, Is that what you find yourself gosh, drawn yes, toward? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that's all pretty much, well, I say that's pretty much all I read, but that's not true because obviously as a writer we read <laughs> very widely and, you know, inform ourselves in all sorts of ways. But, yes, total fan of, you know, I'm always reading whatever's on the Stoker list. I'm trying to work my way through it. Um, <laughs> I'm very lucky to be, you know, the judge on a number of, um, you know, and juror on a number of, um, international literary awards and stipends and various things like that. So I get this wonderful sneak peek into what our new talent is coming up with, and there's plenty of it. There's plenty to talk about. Um, I'm excited because I think it's a genre, especially in this time of, you know, very uh, lots of conflict and, and unrest and uncertainty. That's a really good place for genre fiction to explore those, those themes and ideas. And so for us as genre writers, you know, it's, it's an exciting time, even while it's a very dark period in our history of humanity, if you like. Mm. Tell me about the, uh, I was curious about the poetry you said was becoming significant also. Yeah, I just thought it was a new and fresh way to approach um, those dark themes. And sometimes you don't necessarily have every, you know, enough to write um, to write a whole novel around, but you've got this idea, which is a moment or or a, an aspect that you really want to deep, do a deep dive into. And um, so poetry's been a, really um, freeing for me. I've really enjoyed that. Um, I didn't think I could be a poet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I kind of did a Why not? Why not? I, I think, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. It's funny, isn't it? I just kind of thought of myself as a prose writer, and I did a lot of poetry courses um, and did a lot of workshops to, to upskill myself because I wanted to make my prose more poetic and lyrical and beautiful and to touch people with the emotion of what I was writing. So I was learning a lot about poetry over the last five or ten years and all of a sudden you know um black cranes came out which is sort of um asian horror women in horror and looking at otherness and expectation and those kinds of things and i thought when that had come out i thought well i still have some things i want to say i'm not finished yet and so um angela eureko smith you know i think you've had mm -hmm. angela on the show and she's just it's wonderfully inspirational and an incredible um, yes. a support to me. And um, so she and I, she said, you know, you, you could be, we could be doing more. What about poetry? And um, we hooked up with um, Jennifer Flynn and Christina Singh, who also appear in Black Crane's Tales of Unquiet Women. And they were very keen and 
and Genevieve, like me, is a new poet. And she said, "Oh, I'm not sure. I've only ever written limericks." And but Angela and Christina were so encouraging, and they said, "If you can write prose, you know, we know you can do this, and we can support you." And they gave us some great ideas for how to get ourselves into poetry. You know, trying forms, and and they, you know, mm-hmm. they sort of let us be brave. Um, and when you've got two, you know, very accomplished dark poets. You know, horror poets. Christina at the time was a a, a, a double Bram Stoker Award winner. She's now a three time Bram Stoker oh, wow. Award winner for poetry. And so, you know, just having them believe in us meant such a big, you know, was was really uplifting. And so, um, yeah, so we kind of launched ourselves in. And I, you know, but up until that point, I'd maybe had ten or fifteen poems published. And so then mm. that that book, Tortured Willows, came out, a, a sort of collaborative collection. Um, and so I'm sort of on my way <laughs> and I, and I'm sort of, it's, it's being very freeing at being able to sort of look at those moments or sometimes narrative, but just, just ha- not necessarily having to, to put down five or 6,000 words, but just those a hundred words might be enough or sometimes even 14 words might be enough to tell the bigger story. So I've, I've, I found it very freeing and a, and a, just a new form and I'm, I'm just, always excited to challenge myself to do some new things and so I'm even p- trying putting some poetry inside my prose um, and looking at new forms of short story and um, I've got um, I'm coming up I've got a story coming out in Shakespeare Unleashed uh, I think which will be out next year in anthology oh. um, coming from Crystal Lake Publishing and um and uh, that's in that classic Monsters Unleashed series. And um, I was able to put some sonnets into the, the story where one of the characters talks in sonnet, which was kind of fun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, oh, it's, wow. just, it's just a very challenging new form. And so, obviously, that's just exciting to me. I, I like to keep learning. So, yeah. Do you, when you're approaching a poem, do you um... – do you tend to throw a lot of words at it and then whittle it down like a sculpture? Or how, how do you approach it? Is it a matter of choosing each word very thoughtfully? What do you find yourself doing? Yeah, I think that's a little bit like the editor in me would always do that anyway, Eric. Um, you know, I can't help myself but sort of take the filters out and do I need this conjunction and those kinds of things. <laughs> so, um, so probably that would always be my process is to whittle something down afterwards. But I've been finding working with form, if you're a new poet, you know, a pantoum or a terzanel or working with form is a really good place to start. Um, Another thing I've done is just taken, found poetry is a good place. You know, you use a few lines from some other piece of work. Um, I know that Orchid Moon, my um, poem Orchid Moon, was actually a poem that was found. It came out of... um, the original couple of lines came out of um, a, a, a Frangipani Wishes, which is a story from Black Cranes, and I worked it and developed it a little bit more, and it came, it turned into another story that I hadn't developed from that story. So, um, sort of tangential, if you like, you know, a kind of something at the crossroads, and you go off in one a different direction, um, but from the same base piece of work. So there's opportunities to sort of explore those ideas, and then bouncing off other poets is wonderful. And I'm very lucky that I have editors approaching me for poems and stories, and so they often come with a theme, and that helps to sort of start that inspiration and that that I, the idea is working. So, yeah, hmm. yeah. What do you find more more difficult or more challenging? Do you do the poems or the stories, and 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 Ooh, why? Yeah, that's tricky. I mean, I think it. I'm, I'm a slow writer, so um, even a poem will take me a day or a couple of days to write. And considering the, how much money you get for a poem, that's uh, that's that's a slow that's a slow um, process. <laughs> you know, yeah. it keeps me poor. Um, but um, uh, and I just am a slow writer. I'm sort of Hemingway esque. Well, not in that kind of caliber, <laughs> but um, but you know, I write 500 words a day and I call that a good day um, and part of my problem is that I'm very involved in mentoring and and being on juries and and doing blurbs for other colleagues and so the, those kinds of things take time away from um, from my writing so not only am I a slow writer but I steal time from my writing to do sort of community things which I think are important as part of 
being a writer as being part of that community. So, yeah, so um, what's – I'm just a slow writer all round. So, yes, and I'm not a natural writer. You know, I have so much – I envy those people with flair. Um, I'm a bit of a bums on seats to quote Eric's wonderful. Um, ask, no, I think it's worse than that, isn't it? To quote Eric's Is that, oh, yes, uh, <laughs> wonderful <seat>. book for <laughs> writers, you. like, you know, how to write more. You've just got to put your bum on the seat and, <laughs> and turn out those words. Um, but having, but also I'm an editor, and so it's really hard for me to turn off my editor brain and do that sort of first draft spew that m- many authors talk to you about. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a person who who kind of I edit the line as I write it, and then I edit, and that's probably why I'm very slow. Um, but on the other hand, when I've written the story, it really needs too much work. Obviously, I send it out for critique and review. Um, but it generally comes back with a few changes and not, you know, major sort of developmental changes or issues. So that's kind of um, my process, and I guess it works for me. Uh, I wish I could be one of those people that churns out, you know, two to five and sometimes 10,000 words a day. That is just it's just not me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, do, do you, so do you, when you put your ass in the seat, um, <laughs> do, you, do you have a um, – problem than getting going like can you just sort of do it or do you have to be in the right mood yeah um no I don't have to be in the right mood sometimes I need to have you know like some people say they've got to do all the laundry first and 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 mop the floors before they can start writing and I kind of feel like I need to clear some of those little tasks so often I'm I start by clearing those little tasks that are playing on my mind and that sort of it's like housework isn't it you kind of clearing those other projects and so that you can have a a, a clear bash at at writing so I sometimes do that and it's probably not in my best interest Um, but I like to have at least these days because I'm a bit of a pantser but I like to have a where am I going with the story kind of idea Mm -hmm. just written and maybe only a line it might be just two or three words as you know, I want this happen and then I maybe want this to happen and this is where I'd like to end up. And that gives me a little bit of a blueprint for, for going forward. And some, I, so I really, it's rare that I um, write myself into a corner I, um, nowadays or if I do, I might get stuck in a spot and I'll just have a chat with some other writer colleagues and they'll say, oh, well, you, you need to do this or pull through this. And, and they usually help me out, actually. Writing is not really solitary. It is, you know, there are always so many inputs and people who have, who, who give you a piece of dialogue or they might, you know, well, have you tried this or that? And I'm very lucky to have a really you know, supportive network and community of writers around me who are willing to help me and I do the same for them. And um, so, so writing, although often my name will be on a short story, I've often had a lot of collaborative help from other people to help me work through where I'm going with that story in the first instance. I, I often sometimes write a pitch too for the story, even though I don't necessarily mean to pitch it. In fact, I don't think I have anything that I, you know, isn't on commission or, you know, I don't have any stories I don't think at the moment that um, that haven't been commissioned or I, I don't submit much these days. In fact, I don't think I've submitted anything for a couple of years. So, and that's simply, oh, wow. yeah, I'm very, very fortunate to be in a position where editors approach me and I'm so, you know, um, so often I've got another, already got an automatic group of people to say, where are you going with this? Or even the editor, this is what I was thinking. Are you happy with this approach? And they might come back with, well, we've got something similar. Could you go a different way? Um, so, you know, I tap into those sources of wonderful support and creatives are, are fantastic for that. You know, I shouldn't say this because, you know, <laughs> I've always been tapped for ideas, but um, I have not a lot of ideas. And so I use my friends a lot <laughs> to, help me, to help me. But I'm sure, Eric, you'd agree with this. Um, writing is not as often collaborative and you, 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 you throw it out even amongst your family, you know, what if I did this, what would you think? And they will mm. come back with something and that will just spark something else and you'll go in a different direction. So. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I actually, it's interesting because my whole thing with ideas is I have 
ideas all day long, but I don't really, I don't really get invested in them unless there's an emotion that comes with them. So if one happens to come through and I'm like, Ooh, I feel this emotionally, then it might, it might haunt me and I want to pursue it. But I, I very much relate to that in terms of not being idea driven. Like that's not, it's more about the feeling. So in a sense, even though you're saying you're talking more about pulling ideas from different places, I, I, I kind of uh, am with you on the underlying sentiment. Yeah, and sometimes those little ones, you know, those little ideas might be the ones you would work with with the poem. You know, they, right. they would be the, the little things that perhaps are, you know, truisms that you just don't think you can write a whole whole novel around, but that might work nicely as a sort of 30-word poem, for example. So there's, there's mm, those opportunities, yeah. and I think those are the ones you need to be writing down, Eric. I'm sure you'd be great at poetry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because you, you said earlier you had only 10 or 15 published at a certain point, and I think you were still, like, getting launched into poetry. And I was trying to remember, I think I've had one published once, but thank you. Yeah, that is, uh, it's worth considering. And it's very fascinating that even though you're saying you can be very condensed and contained with a poem and summarize something in like say a hundred words, it can also be a really epic experience despite the low word count. Yeah. Oh, totally. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you can do the narrative thing of course as well, you know, and just right. a really yeah. tight, a little bit like drabbles in flash fiction, you know, you've got that, that tighter contained um process you know and and form to to work in so it's challenging everything has their you know different place in the you know in in the scheme of in the literary scheme you know what what's and and they work out to be what they work out to be don't they eric so you know a story mm. is as long as it needs to be to tell the story so um I think. Yeah, yeah, and it's um. There often is a lot of um. A lot of the process is devoted to solving that very thing you just said. Like, how long? What is the right length? Like, did I did I economize it correctly? Is it all fitting here? Is this is this the size of body that it wants? It's it's all fascinating stuff. Totally, I, and it's kind of magical, yeah. isn't it? Because it sort of it is, happens yeah. in your head and. You know, afterwards you can read the thing and you think, wow, where did that come from? And I'm, you know, you surprise yourself that that's that whole magic of, you know, there are plenty of books about how to write a novel and, you know, hero's mm -hmm. journey and stories arc and, you know, complication, complication. Um, but at the end of the day, it's kind of a magic thing, isn't it? To pull all those threads together and get the foreshadowing right and, I don't know, um, just kind of magically comes together in your head and that's sort of part of the creation, isn't it? The eureka thing that intuitively yeah. comes together. It's sort of like, yeah, when you sneak up on yourself, when you're like thinking without thinking, it's like, oh, these are all the right decisions somehow, but it's all like working very fluidly and effortlessly because you're like, you're just in it intuitively. You're not forcing it or overcooking it and all those things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's a fine place to be, isn't it? And that's that's just... The, the yeah that's, it's that's like, the joy yeah it's like being a r marathon runner because for me I, I don't think I'm naturally I naturally have that flair so I'm a sort of hard worker okay. you know I you know I mow to the corners of the lawn and um and and hope that those technical things will help me through and sometimes I'm lucky mm -hmm. you know and um, and I, you know, like I say, I get great input and support from other colleagues. But I do think some people have flair, and I'm just one of those bloody hard workers, I think. That's, that's more mm. me. But do you think – I understand what you're saying, and I don't want to uh, discount the thought. But do, but do you think also along the way, because you've written and published so much, and now, like you said, you're being commissioned a lot, and you're, you're in demand. So you, obviously you have an extraordinary level of experience. So do you think as you become more experienced – that you 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 are you find yourself not working as hard, or am I wrong? No, no, I I I think no. I, yeah, <laughs> I, you know I I suffer a lot from this imposter syndrome, and mm -hmm. you know, and you know, you're only as good as the last piece of writing that you put out. You know, I'm always wanting to do mm -hmm. something better and write something better, and you know, I I don't want to be that one book wonder that. Oh, Look, don't get me wrong. Writing a book is a big deal, and anyone who writes a book, <laughs> congratulations. Yeah. Um, but I sort of feel like I want to keep challenging myself and creating something different and new and fresh, and and and, and pushing the limits of what I can do. So um, I don't, I don't really feel that um, you know I'm there yet. And and it, yes, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'm always 
gratified when editors approach me and say, well, we think we'd like to have you on our lineup and do you think you could do something? And then I panic. What am I going to do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Paralysis. How am I ever going to sit in this TOC with these amazing writers? Yeah. And so I do panic a bit. Um, and, you know, and, I, and I've won some awards and that's, and, and that's just, mm. you know, it's just a miracle and I don't know how it's happened um, because, you know, you don't when you read the other things that are on the ballots and you think oh well there's just no way it's just I, I'm just you know thank you very much <laughs> people for just being so kind and putting me there but and I think that that sort of is part of what drives me is that you know when you've won some awards you don't want anyone to find out you're an imposter and that you're just here by fluke mm. and so you have to <laughs> you have to keep <laughs> working to try and you know, write something fresh and, and that resonates for people then that's speaking to these new – and there's always a new theme, isn't there? I mean, there's just always something. We've got climate change and we've got, you know, political unrest mm. and invasions and there's so much to be addressed in sort of horror and dark fiction and, and dark fantasy at the moment and characters and why we why people make the decisions they make in the environment they're in. And so for us as, as writers, you know, there's – there is a lot of scope to challenge ourselves to do better and also to write about these new fresh, fresh, well, they're the same things, history repeating the, repeating itself, but why, you know, and what can we do? And mm. and how as writers can we offer maybe some entertainment, some escape, but also some solutions and perhaps just that feeling of hope, which I think just goes hand in hand with horror for some reason. And mm. also humour. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, I think you're really a superlative example for the listeners of uh, somebody who shows that, in addition to your exceptional talent, oh. your your, humil your humility is uh, so instructive. Because I think uh, it is important for writers uh, to know to be humble and modest and easy to deal with and flexible. And I think that's part of why your uh, work is in demand. I mean, of course, it's the it's first and foremost the work itself. But um, I think that is a really good ethic. Not not that it's uh, inauthentic in any way. I understand everything you're saying, but uh, it's very um, refreshing that you're. Uh, you, you know, when push comes to shove, you're sort of expressing that it's that blank page is daunting. I mean, it's uh, no matter what you've done last or how many awards you've won. When you're sitting in front of the blank page, it's always like, can I outdo what I did last? Can I remain fertile? And those always remain very uh, significant questions. Oh, they certainly do. They certainly do. And I, you know, when I when I say, well, thank you for saying that I'm humble. And I, <laughs> but to be honest, I owe everything to the community. You know, the writers mm. are. Extra, you know, we're really struggling. You know, I mean, I, I you know, I just don't make a lot of money. Um, it, some do, but in general, we don't. Um, and mm. so it's hard. Um, and so, you know, I couldn't do this without the support of, I've had a number of fantastic mentors who've supported me. Um, whenever something comes out, I have colleagues who, who support the, you know, signal boost and, you know, that I have, I have writers that help me with, you know, ideas and bouncing off, you know, brainstorming and that kind of thing. So, and just sometimes mm -hmm. it's just tough and you can just, it's just wonderful to have this community around us that just get it. You know, we get the struggle of the mm -hmm. blank page and, you know, I, I'm, I'm feeling off today. Okay. What are you going to do to refresh the well? I mean, come back and do something spectacular. You know, we know you can do this. How are we going to get in? How can you get yourself back into that place where you're in this creative, creative space? And so, you know, I do owe everything to my, um, my community, the writing community, the horror community in particular mm. is especially um, welcoming and, you know, because I think horror is the ugly stepsister of, of genre. Um, mm. And so most of my work touches on horror somewhere. I do, like I said, I did Supernatural Crime Noir. I've done a series with Dan Raybart's, um, two super mm. fun series, collaborative work. And, but, um, you know, and so I'm just so grateful to my fellow writers for just making me welcome and, and saying, yeah, you belong here. You have something to say. Um, and, and, and I like to pay it forward too, you know, um, one of the most inspiring things is to work with, with emerging writers and see the new talent coming through and you, and, and, mm -hmm. and, um, being a mentor, I am a, a mentor for a number of, um, writing organizations and that's just a powerful and inspiring and empowering. And I, I never come out of a mentorship without learning something, 
Um, so, you know, the, the community is what makes me. I don't think I could, I could exist in this, in a vacuum and be that writer that just writes and puts their book out and, you know, their literary. Age. I don't mm-hmm. think I'm that, that writer. <laughs> so, <laughs> mm, yeah. What, what I love about horror in particular, and this goes for not only the genre, but the people in it, as you're saying, is uh, it's very, very resistant to pretense. Like, it's not pretentious. So, like you said, like the ugly stepchild sort of thing. Like, uh, I think that's why you do you do encounter a lot of very sweet, kind, generous people. And it's, uh, it's a very uh, pleasant place to be. Ironically, because we're writing about unpleasant things. Yeah, people always say that. Yeah. You know, why aren't you writing something but more smiley? You know, you're a smiley <laughs> person in general, aren't you? You know, why don't you write something smiley <laughs> um, and happy, you know, and why did you put this chiclet, you know? Um, but I, you know, I, just, I felt that that was, you've got to write what resonates, don't you, Eric? I mean, I don't, mm. I, I, if it doesn't speak to you, then why should it speak to anybody else? And so I think you really are mm. your first reader and you, you've got to be honest with yourself. And I think the more I'm putting myself into my writing, the more, I I feel like I'm I'm writing uh, well I won't say better work but work that that keeps me that 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 nurtures me that nourishes me that mm-hmm. makes me feel as a creative that I'm moving forward I think that's that's the truth it's scary because you have to put so much of yourself out there um, mm. Yeah. yeah, but that's what it's all about. That's the key. I mean, so that's a fantastic place to be to feel like you're really uh, dialed into your own authenticity. Yeah, I write about cupcakes, and that's why. I <laughs> well. And, and yeah. people are so happy. I'm just I write about cupcakes. And- well, he's uh, Al is being modest. Al writes epic poems about cupcakes. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. He and usually frosting. he spends about three days on each word. So yeah, and, you yeah. Know, and I, I don't think we should belittle any genre. You know, if readers find their 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 space, you know, they they like a particular genre because it allows them to escape. It allows them to address things with the from a distance. They can look at, you know, character dilemmas and and see that parallel mm. in their own lives. Then you know, you know, who are we to tell them what they should and shouldn't read? So if a cozy mystery or an epic poem about cupcakes speaks to you in the moment <laughs> then that's fine that's that's what you should be reading you know um that, that that's a, you know an, a, any reading is is you know any genre and any book or any story that you're you're that you um um relate to and that resonates for you works then that's that's good i mean i think that's yeah. what you know, art is all about. And I do think, yes. you know, in the last couple of years, with, especially with COVID and, you know, people looking for an escapism and, you know, we, this is the weirdest, you know, um, uh, end of the world dystopia, isn't it? Where we all sit in our own home homes and look at the television or, you know, <laughs> our iPads and, and watch what's happening outside the window. But generally people turn to art, people turn to poetry and they turn to books and reading and and movies and all of those media that 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 provided some solace or at least a space where they could detach from what was happening in the real world so you know i think it art has such a huge role in 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 moving forward and and addressing all of the the real world issues that we're dealing with at the moment uh, well said. And also, speaking of movies, are are we to understand that you're uh, about to go to a table read? Is this for something you wrote, or what's going on? Yeah. Um. So yes, it's a feature film. It's Asian New Zealand horror, body horror, and horror. It's oh, nice. really okay. fabulous. Um, I was brought on to do the director's cut. Um, and um, so we're now it's it's all looking go. I think it's looking to go um into production in April of next year. So we're doing a table read to sort of get um, all the distributors on board I think pretty much and so um, so we're just doing a table read to sort of drill down that dialogue and just make sure that there are no nuances and things that we need to address Um, so really looking forward to that it's been it's all new to me what was it uh, say I'm sorry say it one more time you were brought on to do what a director's cut Oh, okay. So, what, what what are you doing? So, so when the director the, uh, the uh, director came on board with this particular, oh, and then we, okay. I yeah. rewrote the 
whole script to bring in their vision. And so we wrote a, rewrote pretty much most of the films from the basic idea and, um, and just sort of oh, it got it. Okay. a different level. So I'm very excited about that. It's just, it's really very fun. I can't wait to announce. Well, I haven't signed an NDA, but I'm not sure I'm supposed to announce it yet. So oh, we won't say anything specific, <laughs> but that's, that's very exciting. Screenwriting is very exciting. It sounds like you have a good uh, combination of genres, which is awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm very lucky to be invited in. Um, you know, it's, it's hard as a novelist to break into, um, into screenwriting and there's this bit of a perception Mm -hmm. that novelists um what's the word that novelists are a bit precious and we if we're right if we're doing our own book we we want it a certain way and we have a certain vision about how things should be done and um, so I was lucky to be brought on to this one because it's not my story to start with um but they needed someone with an Asian background they needed someone working in horror who could you know and so I was very lucky to be able to be brought on to this one and they've used it as a mentoring tool actually so I've been very lucky to learn a lot about scripting and and that process um, and Eric you'll know it's quite a different mm. form isn't it when you're doing a, a script from um doing a piece of prose it, it's, it's oh absolutely it's yeah a, see I have no I have no patience so screenwriting is perfect for me because it's just uh, action and dialogue. So it's like everything's like a verb. You're just like flying forward. So Absolutely. Um, because the power yeah. in, in a novel, when you're writing prose, the, all the power of a sentence is in that verb. So I agree yes, with you there. Yeah. But with, with screenwriting, it's all about the how. So you're using a lot of adverbs. Mm-hmm. And yeah. as writers, any writers listening in will know that Uncle Stephen King says that the road to hell <laughs> is paved with adverbs. So as writers of prose, we <laughs> take yeah, those all yeah. out. And then as writers of screenplays um, or, or plays, we have to put those words back in so that the Oh, you're has... so right. Yeah, and yeah. it's, it's a cringeworthy <laughs> thing, isn't it, yeah. Eric? You're going, oh, no, I can't put that adverb in. But that's what yeah. you want, so. <laughs> it's, it's so funny you're bringing that up because I was – uh, I, I was wondering with a friend in the past couple of weeks that how many people that read Stephen King's on writing just stopped using adverbs, which is a good thing. I mean, it, he probably like changed the world forever in terms of writing after he put that out there. Yeah, I, to me, it's a form yeah. of filtering, isn't it? To say somebody yeah. did something in a certain way, it's kind of, you know, you're telling the, the reader what to think. Whereas if you actually do right, that right. thing, then you can show the reader and they can make their own decision about how the, what the motion the, the character is. Mm, it evokes so, it. So yeah, I, I do I believe, it. I do agree with Uncle Stephen when it comes to, comes to prose. Um, I think here. he's, I think he's on the right track and we need to use a much more powerful verb in order to get our meaning across but with screenwriting <laughs> it's quite a different um skill so i i've really enjoyed Good it's, point. it's it's how i i just love learning new things and they've been so kind to me to invite me in and be part of this this fabulous team um really top-notch team i'm just so excited to be working with them and they've just been so kind to me you know and and i ask these dumb you know novelist questions and they come back and say oh well this is this and that and they've very so i'm i'm excited because it's an opportunity and you know i'm looking forward to moving into doing perhaps some of my own work and 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 using and and you know exploring some of my own stories through screenwriting so Oh, very nice, yeah. yeah. Al, I think Al, I think Lee is the nicest person we've ever had on. Oh, I mean, you say that to everybody you have on. Yeah, no, no. You yeah, I was going to say, you said back. that last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, yeah. Still, I'm actually, I'm a... I'm a little concerned. I'm like, I hope nobody uh, takes advantage of her. She's the nicest person. Like, of course, every team would welcome you. It comes as no surprise. Oh, and yeah. you're very, very, very pleasant. To she, talk. she seems that way, but she's really a savage. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting. The for truth comes out in, in her in her writing. Okay, so right, right. That's that's where know. it comes out. Yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but anyway, so let's, let's. I know you have to go because you're you're a big Hollywood person. Oh, no, so. not Hollywood, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There'll be. Um, so listen. Um, how do people locate you, or do you have a website? Do you like social media? Where do you like your reader fans to find you? Yeah, I'm on um, Twitter, Lee Murray Writer, or I think it is, and I'm on um, Facebook mostly because I'm old, uh, <laughs> and I'm, I kind of one of those people that you know you just do. I, you, do one thing well and so I I, I kind of go there do the thing and then leave I'm, I'm on Instagram but I hardly ever use it 
Um, you can find me on um, BookBub and um, Amazon. I'm, I have a website. It's um, leemurray.info. And um, I give out free books to anyone who likes to subscribe there. So, you know, um, I don't really send out too many newsletters. Uh, I think I've done one this year. So, you know, it's not particularly spammy. So I'd love for people to connect with me there via my website. So. Well, fantastic. Well, we'll put that up on our website too, so people can locate you, the ones that can't spell. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And I appreciate, <laughs> we, get, we have quite a few of them. Um, so I appreciate uh, having you on. So um, take care of yourself and good luck in Hollywood. Um, <laughs> our, our guest has been the uh, New Zealand horror writer or speculative fiction, and that's uh, Lee Murray. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Get the latest news and opinions from Eric Shapiro from the House of Mystery website in the Shapiro Report. You've been listening to the House of Mystery radio show. To find out more about our guests, hosts, or shows, go to www.houseofmystery.com. Show is over for now. Was it as good for you as it was for me? Yeah. Good night. This has been a production of Something Weird Media. I'll be back.